Girls Stroke Association that, um, you know, that progression is always there with the stroke. It might be small, but the progression is there, and there's always hope. So never, ever, ever talk about plateaus to patients. It's such a negative. It was taught to my husband. I've been plateauing ever since July 2010. How wrong was that? Mm. Wasn't I? Mm. Um, the other thing I would say that's very important is you can lead a camel to water, and I know this from my charity in two years. People, some people get upset or jealous that I've done what I've done. Yes, that I'm pretty unique in that respect. But you can lead a camel to water and inspire and empower, which is what I'm trying to do. But if they don't want to win it, if they're not prepared to put the effort in to drink it, they won't get anywhere. And similarly with you as students, um, it's something you need to think about in that you need to work out the, the individual patient, what motivates them, what doesn't, uh, which goal is going to light their fire, which isn't. Uh, but equally, you've also got to understand some patients will not progress because they're not prepared or they can't or they won't put the effort in to get there. I mean, I, I wasn't lying when I said 30 times a day I was doing what I was doing. You get the fantastic results. You know, you've got to set your sights on what you can achieve with, with the patient. And I don't believe, I believe everyone should get more rehabilitation in the community without question and everything. But I think there should be some way of um, allowing us to work out whether we get, who gets that rehabilitation to what level. Everyone should get it, but the levels should vary depending on their motivation to put the effort in. And all I would say is, and it's in my first book, this, this quote, I think is absolutely incredible. Success is not final, failure is not fatal, it's the courage to continue that counts. And that sums me up, to be honest, and I think that's, that's a really good thing to take away. And last thing, what you don't know is one of my inspirational groups, Rocky. I was on the Philadelphia steps. What I was able to do, they said I'd, I'd never walk, they said I'd be in a nursing home. On the, 4th of De well, on the 4th of December last year, I ran, walked, ran one and a half miles in the first support 10k race. And that was me back to fell running. I don't choose to do it now because it would hurt my hips on the road cyclist. Um, but that was me doing it. And that was what I only ever wanted to do when I wrote on the nurse's station computer and they printed it out for me. I wrote the words, I'll tell you what I wrote, I will walk again. And I wrote it out three times. And then I also wrote, I won't give the nurses the rods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> so, um, I'm sorry for everyone. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay, we've just got about five minutes, so yeah. Mm. Um, it seems that um, you talk a lot about kind of motivation um, and your own motivation um, and how important that was for you. And I just wondered if there are any kind of you've spoken about some key moments with reactions of staff and things where you managed to do something. But I'm just thinking uh, for us as kind of budding speech and language therapists, how can we? Were there any moments where you felt like somebody had accessed that that um, motivation in you and? How can we kind of I think that's a good question. I think that um, one of the things I would say, and it was quite by accident we found this out, it wasn't a deliberate strategy, but I see it with families all over the world that people do too much for the patient. The patient has to understand they've got to own this illness. It's, it's rubbish, we're going to be there to support you, but you are expected to do this because I will only go so far with you otherwise. I feel, I feel that's quite an important measure, uh, message, but I also feel that you've got to get into the psyche of the individual. What is it they want to do? Do they want to drink a cup of tea? Do they want to uh, walk down the path to get the kids from school? I wanted to do a big thing and run. Not everybody wants to do it. Of course they don't want to do that. But what it is that's going to really fathom, is it eating Christmas Day dinner, or even if it's puree, 
Is it, you know, what is it? What's that, what's that big goal? And then how do we break that down so they can see the goal? But I mean, in terms of motivation, you've just got to, you've got to get inside the head of the patient, really, because that's what they didn't do with me, and they underestimated what they were working with. So much so that um, I, in my electric chair, will be always five minutes early for a physio, and I was always be five minutes longer in physio than I should have been, because I, they couldn't ever give me enough. At one point, we were going to hire our own um, private physio because I wanted more time. And they treated me like a other patients. And that might have been fine for them, but not for me. And so kind of interpret the signs that the patient's yeah. giving you about yeah, exactly. what, they, what they feel. And I think you, um, you, you have to lay it on the line and say, look, I'm very confident about this. But you've got to know this is going to take some, a lot of hard work. Are you up for the game? You know, this is how it's going to be. I want you to, to say hello to your daughter, your baby, as she grows up. I want you to drink a cup of tea. I want you to do this. You know, I think, um, I think it's just getting more inside the head of the patient. You mentioned about sort of the grieving process after the stroke. I wondered if you'd sort of got any help with that and sort of readjusting. Do you know, I left hospital on 29th of September 2010. I had two weeks community uh, physio, which I sacked. And I had no, I've had no psychological, I've had no support, I've had nothing, nothing Nothing for the emotional side of stroke, which I think are enormous. In fact, the Stroke Association are doing a big campaign next year, They're doing the research now. I'm doing the research and we're fighting strokes. The emotional sides of stroke are massive. Um, and there's, there's nothing out there. I mean, they're, they're cutting 20 billion off the NHS budget. So I think we're moving to a situation where people like me, you know, who have strokes or illness, they're going to have to take a lot more on themselves to help themselves get better, which my third book hopefully will help people do. It's more of a self-help type thing. But um, in answer to your question, I've had nothing. And a lot of people have nothing. And I did grieve. And it was tough. What I'm really aware of, um, and I know this is a this is a really emotional subject, but you have had absolutely fantastic support from your family, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess that also <coughs> makes you a bit unique because some fam some people don't have fantastic support from their families. Sometimes people have strokes and they're on their own; um, they don't have anybody. And um, do, I mean, do you have any advice about that for? Well, a couple of things. Uh, without question, my family and my very close friends were exceptional in hospital. Mm. Uh, when I left hospital, you don't have a bandage on your brain, so you, no, people no. just assume you're back to normal. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the reasons why it was harder, mm. because yeah. uh, I wasn't being cared for by anybody. Mm. You know, I was normal. In terms of other people, I, because that you know yourself, there's evidence all over that says, if you have any illness, uh, if you've got the support of family and friends, you're more likely to do better. Mm. That's a fact. How you get that, I don't know. I mean, I, I, truthfully, I've had so many people who say, who read the, the first book, which is very practical, very raw, and I do swear a lot, I'm afraid, but I do give Mark a hard time in the book because I, that was my take, that was my take. Mm. My best friend um, and my mum at the time, from what I saw, Truthfully, was was very good. I mean, my best friend was that exceptional. Woman was very good. But that belied the whole story that was going on in my absence. Yes. But um, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, you've just got the most amazing friends. I have had the most amazing friends when I was in hospital. Um, and you either have it or you don't, do you? And I think it's it's tough. Yes. It's really. I, what, I, well, I don't know what I can say.